how does what you do in your eyes help the fucked up planet? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 this is the inescapable ethical question for all artists, you know. And um, the, the answer is very little, but no less than anyone else. And if, if, if the whole world was full of people who said, well, all I can do is the best I can do, then I think that would be helpful. So you do the best you can do, you know. Um, you ha you you can't do that from a position of ignorance. So be just going. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, you can't do that. So you you have to stand in the face of that and still find um, the possibility that you need to make your work. That's, you know, that's one thing, you go, yeah. So I, I stand, you know, I moderately, I put myself mo moderately aware of what's fucked, you know, a, a constant observer of how fucked it is. And the kind of, you know, it used to be we could just think, well, we're fucked because of climate change, but now we go, we're fucked because of climate change, but we're also fucked because the system's got no way of dealing with that and no willingness to deal with that and the forces, you know, so it becomes a political thing on top of the scientific thing. So you have to stand in face of that and still say, and then and then say, do I still want to do this, knowing that, you know. And, you know, I, I worked for a long years in disability and especially with young children. And, you know, the basic fact is premature babies die because they're not prepared to spend enough money to um, get enough humidity creeps to keep them alive. So that they just make these arbitrary decisions from this age we will keep them alive, and from the, if they're born before that, then we just, they just don't, you know. So it's purely an economic question. And, and I, um, you go, that's, well, you know, yes, I, you know, people have, they're watching babies die, allowing babies to die, basically. Um, it's it's precarious, I'm not saying that it's, it's cut and dried, it's a precarious thing to do to keep a a premature baby alive at a very young age is really, really, really precarious. But in the end, it's they got they've had to say, well, financially, we can only afford this much. And you go, well, that's interesting. So you go, that's a real ethical dilemma on the day-to-day -day basis for those people. And then they have to go, and we will keep going, and we will keep trying. You know, knowing that, not go, oh, I'll give up. You know, because um, yeah. So to, you have to step. You have to face it. Is, is, is the first step. If you're facing that dilemma, the dilemma, and staying open, you know, I get exhausted from facing it, so sometimes I have to turn off. You know, sometimes I can't bear to watch the news. Someone who's always attended to the news now, I, I can't bear it. I just have to, I can't see another image of that or this. So, but, but I know it's there, I just don't have to rub my nose in it every single day in that kind of way. I don't have the stamina for that or resilience for that. Um, so you stand and face it and you're performing in the knowledge of that. I always use an example of, you know, my mother was in every solo I did for 10 years after she died, in some form or other. But I wasn't talking about my mother all the time. But her presence, you know, and I go, well, why is that? Because I, because I sat at home thinking, I've got to do work about my mother, I've got to do work. No. It's because it's who I am and it's what I was aware of, so therefore up it pops, up it pops, you know. It's, if it's who you are, then it, you don't need to force it to be present. It is present, you know. So uh, I've got a few uh, people I coach who are political and they go, yeah, I want to be political. And I go, no, you are political. You don't have to think up the politics and bang people over the head with the politics before you start. If you go out there and you're true to this form, it's political, what you do, it's unavoidable. It's who you are, it comes out. If it doesn't come out, then you're pretending, you're not political, and that's dishonest, you know. So, welcome to the club of charlatans, I'd say. But, like how, you know, so that's what I, I trust that, that in terms of those issues, they are there. Like, like I've got that thing I said last night about here we are standing on the land, and I go, no, we're doing European, we're floating above the land, because we're so fucking terrified of it. 
but we build these things on top of it so we don't have to feel it, you know. So I said something about that in my imagination last night. Here we are floating above this land. It's not just land, it's bones as well. You know, like that's, that's not a speech I'm preparing, but that's, the, suddenly I'm aware of that. As I'm going, yeah, here we are floating up there. There's the dirt. And then I think about the dirt and I go, that's got the, metaphorically, that's full of bones of the people we've destroyed so that we can float up here in our, you know. So, so it's like that stuff will come out because it's who you are. Um, in other forms, I think that real, that process is different, but in my form, that makes complete sense. So I'm aware of and I stand in the face of that. And then there's the other thing that you go, well, uh, this a kind of fake anthropology of performance that I've invented in my head. How did performing start in human beings? And I have this image of a very cold, dark night and People quite dirty, quite hungry, dressed at least in rags, but in my cartoon-driven imagination, fur, you know, scraps of fur, uh, sitting around a fire, 20 or 30 of them, the howling of scary things all around them, freezing cold, dark. Somebody says, oh, you remember when so-and-so fell in the river? That was great. And they go, yeah, that was great. And someone says, remember last... Remember a few months ago when it was warm? Well, that's a few months more that it will be warm. So it's this thing about bringing people together uh, in the dark to have a moment of hope in some way. And it's not necessarily in the content. For some people, just being together is the hope, you know. And uh, at this point in history, choosing to do that is hope. Just the fact that you offer a chance for people to come together. These are all very, very minor, but they're they're kind of they they tick into hope for people. And it is hopeless, so it's not Pollyanna. You know, work you can't bring them and say, Yeah, everything's gonna be fine. I've got the solution. Uh, that's just dishonesty again, you know. But you go while human beings will take time to make art when we've got all these reasons why we shouldn't be, you know? And if you, if you take out the ones making art, you take out the ambition, the ego of all of that, and they're still fundamentally, like you do, making their art because that's all they can do. I think there's, that's quite a thing, actually. Uh, quite a good thing that people go, yeah, I, it's still needs to be done. Every culture has had it. Every culture needs it. We happen to live in a culture that has turned into some bizarre, corrupted, evil force, you know, when we act out all the other capitalist kind of structures and all of that. But if there are people that are still going, it's that. So that's why my, program, my project this year that I'm doing is called Brief Moments of Solidarity in a World Gone Mad. So taking opportunities to bring, you know, not huge numbers of people because then you've got Nuremberg. <laughs> Let's not do that. I have no interest in doing that. But bringing small groups of people, letting them self-select, not forcing people to come. <clears throat> I do, most of them are online this year that I will do, um, but some live ones as well. And they're just a forum for me to, or, or others to perform in. And look at that, look at us surrounded by the horror of what we have done and what we are still doing. Our inability to learn is astonishing. Um, and yet still able to come together to have a positive experience together. And then you walk away into the dark with Nigel Calloway and um, have a little chat. And you go, yeah, all this makes sense. Well, that bit all makes sense. You know, how I deal with everyone I meet on a daily basis, my world makes sense if I'm attentive to that. And performing is just another form of that.